Uh, let's see how cold we actually got. Minus 31, 2 somewhere. Oh, 5 degrees. I guess the floor heating is struggling here. Let's see what it's putting out into the floor. Uh, 35 degrees it's pumping and it's aiming to hold 40 right now. So I think I might need to increase this one step. So what I did now was I increased the heating curve. So the colder it gets, uh, the quicker the furnace temperature rises. So let's get out on the road. See if we will find any place where it is even colder. You have to be fast so you don't lose all the heat in the garage. Okay, let's get on the road. Yeah, I was thinking I will go get some fuel, but I'm not sure if I feel for going out of the car. <laughs> Minus 37. But we just had a huge drop in uh, fuel prices. It was not so cold as I expected it to be. When I got close to Umeå it was minus 38 in some spots. But here uh, closer to Vinden it's uh, 32, 33, somewhere there. But you can see that the, the car is struggling to keep the engine temperature. On the left gauge you see that it's just one line, that's the water temperature. And then on the right gauge you have the oil temperature closer to what it should be but still running too cold. It was a cold drive. Yeah, now we are on the second day here with below 30. I would maybe say the third day even. Maybe need to check that the batteries are not in low charge because then they will probably freeze. These cars I don't need to bother about any batteries because they are always standing in the garage. One thing that is also important uh, during colder days is to have a good coolant mixture. This one has been changed in the workshop. Uh, this one I changed myself or at least I checked it and it's around 50-50 mixture with ethylene glycol and water. So then it should withstand at least down to minus 40 or something like that. Yeah, I always dreamt of having a suitcase, I don't know why. <laughs> so now, now I have tools in a suitcase. Okay, so we will need this one. Check the voltage. And then I found a really nice uh, bar chart uh, where you can compare the voltage to specific gravity. And then from that you can find the freezing point. Okay, so let's see here. Open this little inspection hatch. That one there. I think I managed finally to get that on ground. See where the positive lead went. There. Okay. What do we have? Nothing. 
How is that possible? Everything is so cold and stiff, so I didn't manage to get it with the camera on, but here, 1303, pretty high. Cooling solution was changed when I did the injection pump, so you needed to loosen that hose to get to the injection pump. So then I also changed the cooling solution, so now it's 50-50. But this one I'm a bit worried about. This is a tractor I bought to build one nice tractor together with this one. This is my first tractor. I actually don't know, I don't even checked if there is any solution. Uh, hard to see, but it looks empty. So this is upcoming project. I have taken off the front loader from it. Now I'm going to take off the front axle and then pull out the engine. So these Fergusons, they don't have a frame. Engine gearbox and rear axle is basically the frame. So to pull out the engine, you need to split the tractor. I got this pretty cheap uh, and the reason for that is because the camshaft had broke. You can clearly see the valves for first cylinder is as they should be, but the other three are completely loose. So we'll see what we do with this. Uh, this has just run 1200 hours, so the tractor itself is probably in much better shape than this one, my first tractor. But this one I have also changed the coolant in, so it's 50-50 and the battery is out for the winter. Yeah, it is crispy. So we don't heat the house with fire. As you see, there is no smoke in the chimney. Now it says minus 32.6 out and uh, plus 20 inside. We have uh, geothermal heating. So, and this is a rather old unit. It's a Nibe Fighter 1210. Hardware is changed recently. So what they do is take water uh, or a brine solution and it circulates it through a hose out in the field. It comes in, a few degrees is extracted and it sends it out again, capturing new heat. I can look right now. You see now it's pushing out 45 degrees into the house. Our warm water, tap water is also 45. It struggled to get any higher now when it's so cold out. You can see outside temp 31 Celsius. So this is cold bearing or cold bearer forward. Minus one is coming in. Cold bearer return minus five is going out. And when this return gets to minus 12, then it will stop. And here we can see this heat pump has run 61,000 hours. <laughs> Pretty impressive. But I think around 55 or something what was with the old hardware. And here you can see uh, additive heat, so electric heat, how many hours. And this has only changed, I think in total, eight hours in three years. So down there is the hose. I think it is 400 or maybe 500 meter of hose at a certain diameter. The brine goes there, run through the hose at a certain speed, catch the soil heat, goes back to the house. I check the prognosis and it seems like the cold is here to stay until Friday. Yeah, I just got my wife going with the kids. It's uh, a bit colder today. Oh, I see we have one uh, light has burned. Need to fix that light. Ah, this garage is struggling to hold the heat still. One degree. <laughs> oh, it's hot, Anna. Let's see what this one say. Uh, putting out 40, aiming for 40. I think I need to lower the curve, force the base temperature higher. I think I put it on 22. Let's see how it registered outside. Minus 35. I'm just worried that this garage will get too cold. I must say it is starting to get a bit rough with this cold. It's around 8 o'clock now in the morning. Oh, there you can.
can see. The blue is just under. So 30 is there. So it is around 36, 37 maybe. Okay, so it should be the coldest in the morning and then it should heat up one degree. <laughs> one degree into. Uh, but then tomorrow only minus 29. So I've seen a lot of people do this uh, hot water become snow trick. Thought I could try it too. Okay, ready. <laughs> So now it's around 10 o'clock and uh, the sunrise is pretty amazing. So now it's just a few hours and then the sun will go down again. I had to do a second try. The first one uh, it was mostly water coming out from the thermos. Uh, so now my wife is filming and I will throw it a bit harder. You can see here on the thermometer we are below. 36 I think we have now It was down to 41 here Oi. No, the, you don't fall down Sun is on the way down Snow is on the way up Are you ready? Okay <laughs> Okay, one more Are you ready? It worked better, but I got a bit of water in my face. <laughs> you did? <laughs> Looks like liquid nitrogen. Did it look cool? Huh? You can check inside. <laughs> uh, I must say I'm starting to get a bit worried. I grew up in Kiruna, above the Arctic Circle. And of course we could have cold weather. But uh, this is something different. Now we have had four days going between 35 and even 41 minus we had for two hours today uh, it's starting to take its toll on all our equipment here like the house the cars the garage <laughs> it's hard for everything to oh no my wife has sit here it's like being squeezed to the steering wheel I'll let the car run one minute in the garage so it heats up a little bit before I go up. But I mean you see here in the garage. Now we are on zero. I realized that uh, the maximum uh, boiler temperature was set to 40. So even if I increased the heat it didn't go further than 40. Now I have set maximum to 42. I cannot set it so much higher because then the, when the electric bill comes we will be ruined for ruined forever. Oh, zero here also. So now it's starting to get to freezing here. I set you here so you can hear the French diesel purring. Oh, I almost dropped the camera. Let's see how cold it is on the road. where the sensor is actually for the car uh, but it usually takes a while to acclimatize to the outside temperature okay see you in a bit so let's see the consumption here now here we have the average for 6000 something kilometers yeah since I put on the winter tires uh, and here we have <laughs> Since it got this cold, it's uh, see, ah, it's not so bad. 0 0.1 liter more. I mean, the diesel heater is running constantly, so yeah, it's even 
pretty impressive for a two-ton car. I say now the thermometer is starting to catch up. I put a light bar on this car uh, a while ago. You can see the difference. Now it's starting to crackling a bit in the roof. It's, uh, I guess with this wind, uh, chill get much colder. But I find it a bit alarming that the temperature drops like this to around 40 and even colder. I got some, some pictures from a friend up in Kiruna and they had 45, uh, sorry, 41 and a half. The uh, car didn't start and, and uh, another friend, they have a winter house a bit to the west in the mountains. They had 44 and a half Celsius. And uh, there is some reports of even colder temperatures, uh, which is rather unusual. Yeah, and especially when it is for such a long time. With the geothermal heating that we have, it um, it's now pushing max, and the house temperature has dropped from 22, one degree per day. Now we are down at uh, 19 degrees, and I see that it's still slowly dropping. I think now we are we have uh, we are at around nine to ten kilowatt per hour, so almost 200 kilowatt per day. And I mean, if that goes on for a long time, then we can we can say goodbye to any salary that we will get next month. Yeah, I pick the kids now and on the way home. So I think this is the coldest spot. It's minus 38 here. Yeah. Everything is so still, the trees are not moving, there's no wind. Just, no, just cold, dark. So now the wife, my wife is making sushi, so we are all looking forward to get home. But I think the kids fell asleep. Yeah, I just came home and here it's 37 now. Dropped one degree signs. Since, uh, two degrees since I left. It's still sleeping. I'm just editing now the last part here before I upload the video. Uh, I guess this this is a video where you have seen a lot of thermometers. Yeah, 41 now, around midnight. But it is very cold now, so I thought it might be interesting for some people to see how it can be to live in northern Sweden when we have unusual cold weather. I hope you find it interesting. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you again. Yeah, it's another day and the uh, cold spell is still here. Around minus 38, even colder at some spots. I don't know how long this will last. I hope not so much longer. But it is beautiful. Wow, look how clear it is. Almost count the trees there on the mountain. 